course, as we well know, these days we're able to source components and ingredients from all over the world. Even something as simple as a Nutrigrain bar has components such as citric acid from the EU, soy from Denmark, vitamins from China, guar gum from India, high fructose corn syrup from the US, etc. from all over the place. And the reason we're able to do this, of course, and for the reason my firms are able to source globally, is due to the fact that we have had these huge improvements in information technology. And inter the internet has allowed us to connect computers and systems all over the world, not just for ordering purposes, but for instance, many companies can connect their computers directly into their suppliers. So as they use up technology, as they use up parts perhaps, they can order new ones automatically from another company. So if there's, as they realize they're running out of red paint, for instance, a sensor in the red paint vat may tell them that it's gone below a certain level and the messages can be sent automatically to the supplier of red paint to send more in. And the same, of course, with many of the components of the Nutrigrain bars, etc. So these, so these information systems have linked very much together to create these massive, far-reaching, world-expanding global logistics networks. Extremely efficient. Led perhaps first by the car industry, the Toyota production system is world famous and led to many advantages, which were not only just a case of receiving materials in time, but for the advantages of suppliers, things like instant payment. It was possible that as soon as their equipment was checked into the factory, they would be paid for it. So not gone are the days with 30 or 60 day payments, which caused cash flow problems for many companies. And of course, on the other side of this was that they were also able to have quality control checks and safety checks take part in the suppliers' factories as part of the network. The big ongoing story, of course, is globalisation and the liberalisation of the world economic system. Whatever criticisms you have of liberal economics, and I have many, it has undoubtedly brought millions out of absolute poverty in China alone, hundreds of millions, and is expending elsewhere in the world. And this, of course, also means there's a growing number of middle class people around the world who want product equal, product, quality products. And therefore, in order to meet all this demand, we've had a removal of large numbers of trade barriers. So we have much easier trade, less limits to global trade, and a great international finance system to finance global trade. And here we have an example of a supply chain for a toy supply chain, which look at greater detail. You'll have a number of different types of suppliers. You'll have a tier one supplier and a tier two supplier. The tier two supplier supplies the tier one, and these go onto the manufacturer, and the manufacturer, of course, then provides these onto an exporter in the host country. And the exporter will send them over abro abroad. As part of this, of course, you also have information flowing in the other direction. And design and development will go to the manufacturer to tell them what is needed in the new product. Who will then endeavour to develop the correct product and supply it to the, to the exporter. And this will then, of course, then go into an importer in, another, in the home country, the country where it's being sold and go via a distributor and a retailer and finally to consumers. All this time, the brand owner is monitoring the market in the home country and passing information on design and development to pass them on to the manufacturer. In other sorts of similar companies, we have similar situations. And for instance, let's look at the manufacturing net for a plastic homeware company. A plastic homeware company has first tier suppliers like we noted, such so like plastic stockists, packaging suppliers, etc., things like that. But beneath these, of course, they need second tier suppliers, people like the chemical company that replies the raw materials to make the plastic, and a cardboard company and ink suppliers who supply the raw materials to make the packaging. Upstream of the plastic homeware manufacturer, we have first tier customers. In many cases, this is going to be wholesalers who stock in warehouses and break down the product, distribute to retailers. Though these second tier customers, the retailers, also, of course, receive supplies from directly in some cases from the manufacturers some retailers will do that some retailers re receive both from wholesaler and manufacturer all this time the green arrows are showing the physical transfer of materials physical transfer of items but all the time going in the other direction the red arrows are showing that the retailers must inform the wholesalers and the manufacturers of what products are selling what products are not selling what's going off the shelves what needs to be restocking on the shelves what's running out what customers are telling them the home where a manufacturer must inform the plastic supplier and the packaging supplier of how much plastic and how much packaging is likely to be needed. We must in turn inform the chemical company, the cardboard company and the ink supplier. Information 
as we noticed in the first slide, good controlled information supplied electronically in most cases, passing down the supply chain is what makes this work. Similarly for a shopping mall for a service we have first tier suppliers, just the security services, the cleaning service, the maintenance services and they will have second tier suppliers, people who supply staff, recruitment agencies, people who supply cleaning materials, people who supply equipment and tools etc for manufacturing repairs. And a shopping mall clearly has two tiers of customers. It has the retail shops themselves. They buy space off the shopping mall and those, shopping, and those customers then of course sell their products onto the retail final customers. Once again, customers are telling retailers what they need, following the red arrows. Retailers are telling the shopping mall. Shopping mall is telling security services and cleaning services and maintenance services who are explaining to the recruitment agencies, the cleaning material suppliers, the equipment suppliers what they need. Material actions and goods pass up the supply chain but so do services and then following way they are going backwards down the supply chain we will see information so the reports of good quality information is key so operational performance we see is an issue for the whole supply chain and you must look at the whole supply chain together and it's very important you do this because actually it's in many ways companies no longer compete with one another Suppl whole supply chains compete with one another if you simply try and squeeze as maximum profit yourself out of the supply chain, you will find that your suppliers and your customers may go elsewhere. So what you actually need to do is make sure your entire supply chain is efficient, as in Toyota, where they treat both internal and external suppliers the same, and your supply chain competes with the other supply chain. Supply chain management is a strategic management issue. You can see how the supply chain develops backwards and forwards and how the links are together important. So we must look at them. We understand competitiveness. Supply chains compete, not individual companies anymore. It makes us look at what the significant links to the network, what's important, what isn't important. Let's put the whole thing together so we can see what interrelates to what. And it helps us to see what is affecting us all in a long-term basis to make sure we're not caught by surprise any future issues that may come along. Therefore, the importance of supply chain design, supply chain management, global sourcing is critical to modern companies.